Today, my brothers and sisters, we are celebrating the feast of a great saint, a very well-known saint, St. Patrick. And unfortunately, we've kind of made him into a cartoon character, which is kind of sad because his story is absolutely incredible and I believe extremely relevant for our times today and relevant for all of us. As we heard in the beginning in some of the bio, uh, St. Patrick was born in the island of Britain in the 400s. And his father was a priest, no, his father was a deacon, sorry. His grandfather was a priest. And uh, so he, he was very rich, he lived in a very rich family he was very comfortable in his life, um, but he had no time for religion when he was a kid. So he basically blew religion off, he didn't listen to the priests, and uh, he had no time for it. Um, and then when he was 16, uh, the Irish from, from Ireland, right, the neighboring island, came over in boats and raided Britain. And his house was on the coast, so they raided his home and took many people captives. They kidnapped many people, and St. Patrick was uh, kidnapped, taken back across the sea to Ireland, right? And in Ireland, they made him a slave. So think about it. He's 16 years old. He's just been ripped away from his life, from his family, from his wealth, from his comfortable home, and suddenly he's in this strange land, the land of the Druids, the land of pagans, the land where Christianity did not even exist yet, where nobody knew Jesus, and there he was as a slave, and his job was to tend the sheep. So he was really suffering because he was outside, exposed to the elements every day, he slept in a cave, he lived in a cave, he slept in the rain, in the cold, in the snow, and he was a slave there for six years. But the incredible thing about this time in his life is that this was the time that he found Jesus. This was the time where he experienced the peace of Jesus, the peace of Christ. And he says in a letter that he wrote that we still have today called the Confession, that he would pray a hundred times a day and a hundred times at night. So all he did was pray and angels would appear, with, appear to him. He would be comforted by the Holy Spirit. And even in the midst of that, he was actually joyful. And he was so joyful that even the Irish people referred to him as the holy boy. He's the holy boy, isn't that amazing? They knew there was something about him that was holy, even though they had no idea about Christianity, no idea about who Jesus was. So he was known as the holy boy for six years, and he was a slave. And then after six years, the Lord gave him a vision, a vision of a boat on the shore, and said to Patrick, it's time to go back home, it's time to go back to Britain. There's a boat waiting for you on the shore. So imagine he has this vision, right? He trusts this vision and he escapes from slavery. He literally had to run 200 miles by himself to get to the shore, to get to the boat that the Lord showed him. Now think about that. If he was caught for running away as a slave, he would have been killed. So he was taking a huge risk in escaping. And, when he, and he was also taking a risk because he had to trust the vision that he had. What if he got to the shore and there was no boat there? Isn't that amazing? His faith was so great that he believed in God's promise. And when he arrived at the shore, the boat was there and he returned to Britain, to his home. Uh, it was a three day journey over the sea. And when he returned to Britain, he, a few years later, had a vision, another vision from God. And the vision was of the Irish people. It was like a huge crowd of Irish people that he saw. And they were all saying to him, holy boy, holy boy, please come back to us. We need you. Please come back. And he knew that this vision was from God. So he knew that God was calling him to go back. 
And think about how scary that must have been. He was just a slave there. He escaped. What if I go back and they kill me, right? Why would anyone want to go back to the country where they were a slave? And when he revealed this to his parents, they were completely shocked. They couldn't believe it. And they, were, they did everything to convince him to not go back. But he felt called by God to share Jesus with the Irish people. And so what happened after that was he decided to become a priest. He was ordained a priest. Then he was ordained a bishop in, in Britain. And he went back to Ireland 30 years later. So now he's probably in his 50s and he's a bishop and he goes back to Ireland. And when he went back to Ireland, he touched so many lives. He literally baptized thousands of people, thousands. And because he was a bishop, he ordained hundreds of priests. And so now the priests were able to celebrate mass. And now there were priests who could share the word of God and share their Eucharist with people so he was very smart in being a bishop because he knew that he had to ordain priests because he couldn't do it all by himself. And to make a long story short, an incredible story, he literally converted the entire island to Jesus. The whole place changed during his life, during his lifetime. And so St. Patrick's story I think goes perfectly with today's gospel. In the gospel today, we hear Jesus saying to the disciples, go to the people of all the nations and make of them disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so St. Patrick's mission was exactly the same as the mission of the disciples, to go out and make disciples of the whole world. And his specific mission field, of course, was Ireland. St. Patrick's mission was the same as the disciples. And also, our mission is the same as St. Patrick's. Our mission, my brothers and sisters, is the same as St. Patrick's in our world today. And so we also are called to make disciples. We also are called to share our faith with the whole world. And we do this through evangelization, through inspiring others by our love, our joy, our peace. People will see this in us as they saw it in Patrick. Huh? Evangelization, to be changed by grace, to be changed by God's grace the way Patrick was as a teenager. Catechesis, we're taught, we're taught to catechize. We're we're invited to catechize, which basically means teaching others about the faith, about the church, about the sacraments, the Eucharist, growing in faith. And finally, we are called to serve, faith in action, mission. And this is what St. Patrick did. He was called to serve the Irish people. If you notice, everything begins with being changed by God's grace. That's where it all begins. That's where it began for Patrick. When he was a slave, he was changed by God's grace. And that's when he truly became a Christian. Yeah, he was baptized as a kid, but he really didn't believe. He really didn't believe until he was a slave. He was completely transformed by the love of God during that six year period. This is the time in which he became known as the holy boy. The holy boy from Britain. And so St. Patrick and today's gospel invite all of us to be holy. So I wanna ask, especially our students today, a question, and Linda has a microphone. There is not just one answer. So I would love to hear your answers. And the question is, what does it mean to be holy? Raise your hands and we wanna hear from you. What does it mean to be holy? Going to church on Sundays. Going to church on Sundays. Father loves that one. It's very true. Being loving. Being loving. Isn't that awesome? 
There's so many answers to this. This is great. What does it mean to be holy? There's, it's one of those words that we throw around all the time. Getting baptized. Getting baptized. Wow. So true. To Baptism makes us holy. To believe in God. He said to believe in God. Awesome. <laughs> Going to church on Sundays. Going to church on Sundays. What does it mean to be holy? Praising God. Praising God? Praising God. That was Cain. Good answer, Cain. Praising God. That's what St. Patrick was doing for six years. Praising God in the midst of his suffering. Can you imagine? You know it's God then. Anyone else? You're the part of God's family. Being part of God's family? Wow. The body of Christ. Here it is, God's family. That's us. Trusting God. Trusting. He said trusting God. Did St. Patrick trust God? Absolutely. He had a vision. He trusted that vision and acted on it. And it was true. It was real. Right? Sometimes we we're afraid to trust. We don't believe what he's saying to us. But he's real. Anyone else? Being respectful and not breaking the Ten Commandments. Wow. Being respectful and not breaking the Ten Commandments. That's a great way to become holy. I love it. To listen to God's plans. To listen to God's plans. To listen to God's plans. Wow. All you students, listen to God's plans. What is God's plan for you? Do you know that God has a special plan and a special mission for all of you? Are you aware of this, right? Sometimes we're only aware about, you know, what we want to do in college, but we have no idea what God's plans are right? What are his plans for you? Any, uh, anyone else? To receive the Eucharist. To receive the Eucharist. Wow. Praise the Lord for the Eucharist. We have another one here. To pray every day. To pray every day. Pray every day. I love it. St. Patrick, at the age of 16, he literally writes it in his letter, the confession. I prayed a hundred times in the morning, a hundred times at night, he said. I was always praying, and I came to know Jesus through prayer, he said. Wow. Incredible. There's going to be a lot of holy people in this, in this place. There is a lot of holy people. To be like St. Patrick. To be like St. Patrick. To be holy. I love it. I love it. So to be a great example, to be good, to be like a saint, right? That's why they call them a saint. That's why they call them the holy boy. And so the message for our students today is that you are invited by God to be holy. Remember that. You are invited by God to be holy. You are invited by God to be the holy boy, to be the holy girl. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are called to be known as holy. Praise the Lord. You are called to be known as holy. In our world today, think about our world today. Our world is calling out to all of you. Holy boy, holy girl, please come help. We need you right? The world needs you. The world needs holiness, goodness, love, the Eucharist. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Know your mission, as we heard today. Know your mission. Know your purpose. Know what God has in store for you. Be open and don't be afraid to follow it the way Patrick did. And so may today's Eucharist, my brothers and sisters, help us to be changed by God's love and grace. For only then will we, like the disciples and St. Patrick, be able to change the world. <laughs>